While the Christian streaming service PureFlix certainly doesn't have any outright horror content, it's clear that even their devoutly religious subscribers still have an appetite for the dark-sided during the month of October. As we see in today's series, The End, which was featured on PureFlix under a new category on the homepage called The End of Evil. But spoiler alert, the evil that's being ended is all of us awful non-Christians who will be left behind to pillage and murder one another when the belief get raptured up to heaven with Jesus. Families going missing, planes falling out of the sky, chaos, destruction. I can see why faith-based production companies love making movies and shows about the rapture. It's kind of the only part of this religion that has all the f***ed up sh that general movie-going audiences love to see. It gives Pure Flix a chance to play in that area while still remaining above it all. Like literally floating above all of it, apparently naked. It's no surprise that many Christians have a complicated relationship with Halloween, not only for its pagan roots, but also because of how Americans in particular love to celebrate it. Blood and gore, carnal pleasures, and the fetishization of animals and objects. Which, as we all know, is the final stage of the gay agenda. People marrying their animals and their wheelbarrows. On Halloween, for every guy out there who's dressed in a waterproof fire hydrant costume getting f by another guy in a dog mask, the devil scores another point in the cosmic basketball game, and the Christians can't stand that. So for today at least, we'll celebrate the season the only way that PureFlix approves of, with the horrifying portrayal of a 15-year-old girl struggling to survive after her family and millions of others disappear into thin air. Today we're covering all six of season one's bewilderingly short episodes, which contain a number of poorly acted home invasions, locations with inconsistent consistent levels of world endiness, and a wobbly cast of supposedly starving, desperate people who all look as healthy and well-fed as if they came right from an air-conditioned church luncheon. Because in this house, Halloween also means the second coming of Christ. Because remember, Jesus loves everybody so, so much. But if you don't believe in him like Santa Claus, he will leave you behind to slowly die. That's right, it's a spooky rapture installment of Pure Flicks Clip Breakdown. Sacrilege. Espera, por favor, because I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Babbel. For my entire adult life, I've wanted to enhance and reinforce the Spanish that I learned throughout high school because I would love to be able to have fluent conversations with Spanish speakers or understand Spanish TV and movies, which is why I truly have been so obsessed with Babbel. Babbel teaches with real world practical conversations. Plus, each lesson is just a short 10 minute interval that I swear feels just right for how my brain wants to learn. That's because these lessons are designed by real language teachers, not AI. When Babbel told me that their award-winning app was scientifically proven to get you speaking in just three weeks, I said, Perfect. And since I want real world skills, I love that there are multiple ways to learn, like podcasts, games, videos. You also get culture, tradition, slang. Right now, I'm learning plenty of phrases to let people know that I'm learning Spanish, such as aprendo espanol, puedes repetir, no entiendo. Should be a good start. <laughs> if you want to start speaking a new language in three weeks with Babbel, then I definitely suggest you click the link in my description to get 65% off your subscription. Like I said, I've been enjoying using this app daily. Thanks, Babbel, for sponsoring. Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web and decide, is it just a holy fool or baby, it's so cruel, by breaking it down into little bitty clips that we can analyze verse by verse, like their Bible verses. Get it? It's pure Blake's mama. Today, we're diving back into our favorite paid Christian streaming service, which I have been told I have no business watching because the content is not created for me. And I just want to say out loud, everything is for me. I take everything. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this rapture based series, but there are so many rapture based movies on Pure Flix. We could do this all year. So let me know if you want to see more in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanted to see even more horror content. I'm thinking of blending horror and Christmas over the November month. Um, but let me know if you're okay with that. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive content like virtual watch parties and bonus episodes. It's really fun. I was super 
excited about the end because I was like, I can watch the whole series in 30 minutes. Amazing. And then from episode one, I was like, yeah, this is what we're here for. Also, the titles of these episodes are amazing. Like the first one is called Mom, <laughs> which makes sense because that's the first character we see on screen. Okay. Honey, it's time for bed. What? It's time for bed. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I'm 15 years old, Mom. I don't do bedtime. <sighs> I'm 40, and I say you do. Well, I'm already at 60. Therefore, I get to decide what time everyone in this house goes to sleep. They're talking about millimeters of anal dilation, right? Oh, my intern Daryl just let me know that those are actually the characters' ages. They really told this woman, congrats, you're now uh, the perfect age to play the mom. And we're also gonna have the character declare that she's two years older than you actually are for no reason. Oh yeah, and you heard right. Fortunately, my intern Daryl did return. Unfortunately, it was as a ghost. So it's just for the month of October. October. Yeah, looks like you didn't get too far without me, did you, sweetie? <sighs> you better stop that. I told you, no interfering with the shoot or I won't pay you any of your ghost biscuits. The show is trying to really lay on thick that maybe Gabriella here is, has an attitude. Gabriella, I'm so sick of your attitude. Look, there's school tomorrow. Can you just please go to bed, okay? <laughs> Got my superpowers and I'm smoking flowers. Um, does Pure Flix know they just played a song with lyrics about smoking weed? I mean, I would imagine that there's at least one employee there who diluted their urine with that herbal supplement to cheat the pre-employment drug screening. And that's fine because even though I don't think it's true and I just made it up, Jesus smoked weed every single day of her life. That was hashtag satire, by the way, in case any of the computers scanning my waveform try to tag this for misinformation. Wait, that sounded really paranoid. Have I been smoking flowers? I got superpowers. Cause I've been smoking flowers like Okay, it's an indie song. This is the only time we meet new characters before the main inciting incident of the episode slash series. I am shocked that they wouldn't introduce us to every member of Gabriella's family before they go missing. Otherwise it's kind of hard to miss them. I also think with the kind of swift intensity that this show brings on in terms of like real world scary stuff, they could have stepped up how much of a on the wrong path they made Gabriella seem to be like match the song, maybe she is using drugs and smoking the heroin. Like, um, not just someone who doesn't want to go to bed on time. That doesn't feel like it's worth living in hell forever for. But apparently Pure Flix disagrees because the next morning, everything seems normal at first when Gabriella wakes up. <laughs> Wow, even Pure Flix can't help but use suitably modest product placement with that ever so slight rack focus onto Gabriella's turby twist. Like, I assume they did that for a reason. But also, we got a couple shots that seem to be teasing an upcoming merch drop from The Lord. Ooh, I can't wait to see what other painted blocks of wood with sayings stamped on them we're gonna get. Also, Gabriella is so Gen Z with those French tip acrylic nails, which by the way, never appear broken or grown out throughout this entire three week long apocalypse. So she must have like a really good at home kit. You know, these kids can learn on TikTok how to do that. They they make gel nails out of apple fritters. I don't know. I wish that artificial nails were this on trend when I was a teenager because then I would have overused my parents' credit card on going to the salon to get a fresh set. Instead of all of those times that we would just go to Chili's and order baskets of chicken crispers out of boredom. In another 10 years, they're gonna have to go in and clean out my arteries with one of those little brushes that they give you with reusable straws. Uh, again, I. I wish they could have built up the suspense of Gabriella going about her business, thinking it's a normal day, but showing signs that things are not quite right. Like maybe just like uh, some piles of clothes on the floor in her sister's room. But it, we don't get that. They didn't even have the time to do that. Like this is the fun stuff. Give, make the reveal slow and dramatic. And they, they kind of didn't. Hey, what's up? Oh my gosh. Gee, my dad is gone. Gone? What do you mean? I don't know, like my mom is freaking out and I don't know what to do. We don't know where- Calm down. He can't just be gone. Well, he is. Hello? G, are you even listening? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I gotta go. Gabriella said, yeah, yeah, sorry about your missing dad, but it looks like now I gotta go ask one of my parents if they can take us to the mall after school today. If they say no and we miss all the good semi-formal dresses, I hope that dad of yours never comes back, Sarah. I swear to our vengeful, terrifying God. I guess in Sarah's house, 
the dad was the only religious one. But anyway, this is the reveal we needed. And obviously, it would be intense to find out that you've been ripped apart from your loved ones for seemingly no reason. Gabriella's acting doesn't quite match. Mom? Dad? Mom, the eggs are burning! Mom? Don't worry, I'm sure there's some logical explanation. Like, maybe she got distracted by the TV and when she meant to turn off the stove, she took off her bra and panties. Rapture movies and shows love letting us know that when you're saved, all of your clothing is left behind. Which I think is creepy and terrifying ever since I saw a clip from that movie in the 70s where the kid's clothing is in the plane seat and the parents are like, where are the kids? Scary. But for this show, there's specific garment choices for the mom's Rapture clothing make it seem like Mrs. Christian Cupcake Wrapper was frying an egg with her ass cheeks out when she got sucked up to the holy place. Which is comforting to me since I own a lot of backless undergarments and it's nice to know that Pure Flix doesn't think that automatically excludes me from the big naked abduction party in the sky. Gabriella here, on the other hand, didn't want to go to bed on time, so she can rot in hell. Time to do the first thing I would have done, which is turn on the news. Millions of people are missing around the globe. Here in the United States, we're getting reports from California, South Florida, Indiana, and New York in what are seemingly unrelated accounts that people of all ages are disappearing into thin air. Wait, how come that person got to keep their clothes when they got raptured? I'm pretty sure the musical Godspell said that they can't take it with them, but this newscaster just exposed Jesus's lie in 4K. If I got raptured up to heaven and I had just a fig leaf covering my anus, I would look around and be like, um. It seems a little weird how some of God's children are up here wearing their nice warm leggings and Gucci slides. What kind of church scandal did they have to stay silent about to get that privilege? Also, back on Earth, this outfit had matching fig leaves that I used as pasties, so I need those shipped back up here right away. Gabriella, bring us the emotion. Your family's dead. What do you do? Latest on this developing story. No! Quick, sniff your mom's panties while they're still freshly worn. Science says that odor is the strongest sense connected to memory. That might be God's way of letting you know she'll always be with you. Oh, I just got a notification from God and my mom panty sniffing comment got me kicked out of the rapture. Well, f you anyway, Lord Almighty. I'd rather stay down here and live the rest of my days as a Mad Max go-go dancer. Just don't rapture too many of the staff members at the Palm Springs STD clinic. I know I've seen some of those nurses wearing mixed textiles. Not to tattle on them, because that's probably against the rules too. Wait, was snitches get snitches one of your commandments or is that prison culture? That's literally how this episode ends with her dropping and being like, no! It's like, yes. <laughs> For five more episodes, yes. The next episode is called I'm saying where I instantly clock a lot of flaws with the way they could have made this um, whole thing better. Also, it's not lost on me that this uh, seems like it's aimed at teens, like their main character is a teenager. They're trying to make it seem really scary that this girl didn't accept Jesus in time. And I just feel like if you're a religion who claims to love everybody, isn't it, and like forgive everybody, isn't it then weird to kind of revel in this part of it where it's like, but except Except for the people who don't believe, one day we'll just leave you here and this is what's gonna happen. Since you didn't accept Jesus into your heart, you're gonna rot and die. That's a great way to scare kids into believing what you want, don't you think? So anyway, this next episode called I'm Staying, we're trying to figure out what's going on. A reporter from the US is live right now from the White House. Hello? This is incredible, folks. Scientists, doctors, and leaders around the world are trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And we are still waiting for answers. We've truly never seen anything like it. Yeah, but not in a happy, lighthearted way, like you're saying it. This news anchor was like, honestly, this rapture was the proof I needed that my anxiety medication is working. Like, I almost don't even give a f and my whole baby disappeared. Oh, they also flash us this three weeks later title card, and I'm just like, what? Three weeks into the future? Why? I wanna see the immediate destruction. Like, I wanna see both. Like, I read the book, The Leftovers, which it seems like maybe this is kind of trying to copy that show, and I love 
loved like getting to read about the chaos instantly after it happened and all of the horrible accidents that came from it. But then also like as the weeks passed, how America tried to, or the world tried to recover. But anyway, we didn't get to see any of that development of the first three weeks of struggle. You know, like what would it be like for a 15 year old to have to suddenly live without her mom or dad? Like she has to figure out all of this stuff that she's never to do before. There could be a lot of good stuff in there, but they skipped it. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I literally haven't been outside in weeks. For real? I'm too scared. Gee, you're gonna have to go out at some point. Sarah, are you doing packing? We have to go. Well, what have you two been doing for the last three weeks? Waiting for dad's life insurance check to clear before you hit the cabin upstate? For people who have been plunged into a world of chaos with millions of people missing for almost a month, I'm surprised that they still have access to running water and electricity, let alone what appears to be some amount of shampoo, conditioner, and leave-in hair serum. The real world got quarantined for one week and we could still order stuff online, but we looked like garbage people. I don't know how they're so well groomed. Like for Gabriella, the end of the world officially begins when there's no power to heat up that hair straightener every morning so she can sit alone in her house all day. So Sarah and her mom are trying to get out of town and Gabriella's been, I guess, starving in her house for weeks? What has she been eating? Show us that, the survival stuff, that's what we love. I wanna see her like eating the dog food, you know? Make that little girl eat dog food. <laughs> mom, can G come with us? I'm not going anywhere. G, please, I don't want to leave you behind. Not like this. Plus, what if you lose electricity or someone comes or something, someone comes and takes you, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of sounds like you don't know, Sarah. Kind of sounds like you didn't know how to finish that line. Also, was there really nobody on set to say, can she hold that phone in her other hand so that there's not a Samsung Galaxy smart tablet blocking her face and voice from the camera lens? Not that this child actor was super invested in this delivery of her monologue. This is her big moment in acting and she said, I don't want to leave you, not like this. What if someone kills you and put your body in the river? That would be so crazy. Also, it doesn't, they don't give Gabriella any motivation for staying home home like what i if if she had said what if my parents come back then that would be one thing and but i also don't feel like many people on earth at that point would be like expecting that and anyway she needs help she needs adult supervision like to survive i think they should have made her be like all right i'll come with you and your parents or i'll come to your mom's house so that like the mom even says okay but she has to be ready by five for us to pick her up what if the mom was like of course she can come but we can't get to that part of town they barricaded it there's fires she needs to find a way to meet us at the Walmart or something where we're picking up camping supplies. And then it's about these two people trying to meet or uh, the mom and Sarah have like, if she's not here by 5 p.m., we have to leave without her. So like, that's the whole suspense is her trying to get there. They don't give us that at all. She just says, nope, no, nope, no, nope. you go ahead without me. Sarah, come on, we gotta go. Come on, this is serious. We really have to get Sarah, what is your mom's name? Sandra? Oh, Sandra and Sarah, that's so cute. Hi, Sandra, I'm Nick. Um, I just have to ask, what's the f***ing rush all of a sudden to get out of town? Why are we just now acting like this is an emergency uh, three weeks after your husband was proven right about you coming to church with him on Easter Sunday? I think that the mom and daughter need their reason for being like, we can't stay in this neighborhood anymore too. Are they out of food? Or maybe there's like gangs of marauders, like people looting their neighborhood and they're like, they're gonna come burn our house down and, mur and kidnap us soon. That's the whole idea of the rapture, right? Of like the unholy people who are sinful are left behind and they're gonna like sexually assault the women and kill them. Like that's the feeling the Bible gave me. Actually, the Bible doesn't really even talk about this. I guess I learned it more from those kids classes I went to church for, I don't know. But like, are, is the power gonna be shut off in another week? What is their reason for leaving? I want to know, but they don't know. So forget it. Pretty much instantly, uh, Gabriella has reasons to regret her choice. <laughs> Okay, somebody definitely could have taken the battery out of that ring doorbell if they knew it was gonna beep during your shot. The people who work at PureFlix are like, um, we actually try not to get too caught up in those details because we were told that's where the devil is. So if you want a good sound design, that means you deserve to rot in hell just as much as this innocent 15 year old we're showing you. Pastor Dan? You're still here. I don't know why I'm still here. I told Jackie this wouldn't end well. We should have stopped. It was all a mistake. We all make mistakes. 
That's gonna be me trying to sell kitchen knives door to door if Disney ever randomly decides to sue me for mm, 80 cases of copyright infringement. I would be like, it's all just a mistake, I swear. I was just holding those DVD rip files for a friend. Feel the weighted blade of this Japanese handle. Uh, it took until like my second time watching this series to realize that the reason the pastor is feeling guilty about not being raptured is because he and someone named Jackie were doing something on the side that he shouldn't have been doing. They could have made that dialogue much more clear because it does come up later. Uh, you'll see. The rapture, it's here. Don't take the mark. They'll steal your soul. Let me in, I can take care of us both. I can help you, I can help us both. No! Gabriella is a visual representation of those 20 year olds who tweet about wanting a sugar daddy but then get creeped out when older men message them. Newsflash, youthful people, in real life, your sugar daddy is probably not gonna look like Matt Bomer. And they will probably not just be depositing money into your account in exchange for G-rated feet pics. So don't talk about wanting a sugar daddy unless you're very open-minded to at least a few saggy sexual encounters. It's fine. In fact, let it be known across every corner of the internet that while I may not be one of the 18 to 29 year old ponies at the petting zoo anymore, you can bet that at least this sugar baby doesn't use the block button, is allowed to cross state lines, and I think those prison issue serial killer glasses make your face look sexy. So call me. The pastor warned Gabriella not to take the mark because it would steal her soul while rambling about Jackie. So that's interesting and brings another level of confusion to this. So clearly people are starting to lose it a little bit here at week three. The pastor's losing it, trying to come in the little girl's house like, nah, uh you stay out there. Good thing that ring doorbell is locked and loaded. Embedded in his hand is a microchip that serves as his keys, his ID, and his wallet. A pinch of the skin, and in a matter of seconds, the chip is inserted. The transformation is complete. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but if the mark of the devil helps me check out at Target even 30 seconds faster, then I don't care if it's a microchip the size of a traffic cone that I have to take rectally. In fact, I feel like I already have one of those, so can I just switch out the SIM card for this version 666 that the government is putting out? What's no joking matter is that I cannot help but see the connection between this mark of the devil implanted microchip government tracking ID, having a very timely uh, sort of subtext for being released in 2020 when there was so much and continues to be so much hesitancy around the vaccine. One of the most popular misinformation theories is that the COVID vaccine is actually a microchip that's being implanted. So it seems like this type of show could easily help validate that belief for any number of people who do believe in some sort of conspiracy theory around the vaccine. They'll be like, oh, the show is right. We don't wanna get the injection because the injection might have the microchip and the microchip might be the mark of the devil that's the end of times and COVID is the end of time. You see how it's like not healthy and helpful and promoting badness, but I guess they can be very ambiguous about it in this way. You know, the mark of the devil is just your microchip. <gasps> that night, Gabriella is about to lose it. I feel like that gun was edited into the scene as well as it could have been. Like I didn't even know what Gabriella was reacting to when he turned around. Pure Flix was sort of like, boo, a Middle Eastern guy. Oh yeah, and he's holding a gun too. I know Gabriella is just 15, but if someone three times your size is looting your kitchen, it's time to hide. You can't deflect his bullets with your aluminum bat. And for all you know, that is a messenger bag full of human skin on the opposite side of his Apple watch. The desperately hungry people in this universe seem super well connected to the internet. I don't want to hurt you. I'm going to take this food. I have to feed my family. That's all I want is the food. Actually, give me that necklace too. And my wife asked if I could pillage some makeup wipes. Do you have any of those? She likes the kind in the blue wrapper, not in the green wrapper, if that means anything to you. Also, look at the way this guy's holding the gun without his finger even on the trigger. He's like, listen, sweetheart, I really don't want to hurt you, okay? So don't come near me. So the episode just ends there with the robber leaving. And uh, that's it. It picks up at the next episode with Gabriella telling Sarah what happened. I didn't lock the door. Gee, I told you for a million times to lock up. Everything is locked down. 
Girl, you still didn't lock it after that guy with the gun left? You are so stupid. You could be with Sarah right now sitting on a dock in a knit sweater like the end of a birth control commercial. But instead, you're at home with a new crazed middle-aged man trying to root in your cupboard every day. Sarah's like, just come to us, we're not too far, you have to make it to us and we'll, we'll be safe here. So Gabriella finally, just days after, like one day after saying, no, I'm not going, realizes, oh, I should have gone, which to me is just like really bad writing, but whatever. <laughs> Uh-oh, more dark-featured men with beards. This can only mean one thing. The local barbershop was not affected by the recent rapture, as they both have perfectly lined up fades for 21 days after hell on earth. Gabriella, time to get out. See anyone? Shh. Hey! Hey! Hey, dude, come on! We don't need it. It's her dad's transition lenses we're after. I hate that she packed up the knife, but we never see her use it. Chekhov's gun. Don't show me a weapon if it's not gonna be coming into play. Gabriella should know that it's unsafe to hitchhike even under normal, unapocalyptic circumstances. But now she wants to hop into a stranger's car after narrowly escaping a threatening situation with every man she's encountered so far. <sighs> when you spend enough time with this girl, you start to understand why God didn't want to invite her to the party. Okay, so based on the way that robber held her at gunpoint for half a box of Kashi Goline, I would have not have expected a fully functioning and this well-stocked of a convenience store to be within walking distance. Maybe that guy wasn't actually looting her. He was just having like a really bad first day as a Postmates driver. He's like, I don't care if this isn't Smashburger, okay? My glitchy GPS is telling me to pick up food here. Also, I cannot deal with Gabriella's survival skills. Her provisions included some Haribo gummies, smart food pop, popcorn, and blue Gatorade. If any of these bad guys want to track you through the woods, they can just follow your trail of bright green turds. Oh, I hate how disgusting that joke was. I hope that some of you laughed at that because I hate what I just said. <laughs> Why is there no panic at the stores? There should be like, this should be the scariest place on earth, but suddenly the store's fine. That'll be $3.89. We don't take credit cards. But so they don't have any cash. We don't take cash either. She said, little mama, this is the apocalypse. If you want your gummy sharks, you're gonna have to dance for them. When she said it cost 389, she meant 389 hours of manual labor in a salt mine. That is the new normal. What is not translating, Gabriella? The, the world is over. But no, 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 no. This chip thing has just become more ubiquitous than we thought in one day in the midst of the biggest disaster that's ever befallen the world. I, I got it, I got it, I got it. What was that you did with your hand? Oh, oh that. How long have you been hiding? I'm not hiding. You should be. Again, because of all of the attempted physical assaults and home invasions you've experienced in the last 48 hours. But Gabriella is our end of days queen of dumb decisions. So off she goes. Uh, you need a ride? Actually, yeah. Great, I'm keeping a bunch of paperwork on the front passenger seat, so I'll just need you to climb into one of these blue oil drums that I keep in the bed of my truck. Did you need to use the restroom first? I don't know, like Gabriella would have learned not to do any of this stuff before the apocalypse as a, a, a 15 year old in America. Hey, this, this is my car right here. Oh, come on. I don't buy it, I promise. Her first sign to be nervous about this guy was when she saw that he drives one of those weird boxy cars. She said, I'm gonna get in anyway, but something about this Honda element is starting to feel very coffin-like, so I won't be too surprised if I don't make it out of there alive. You care for one? No, thanks. I have the address right here. I'm in no rush. Um, I'm gonna puke. He just ruined Dum Dum's lollipops for me. Just like that nosy bank teller who got my candy dish privileges revoked. Pretty bold move for someone who I easily got fired with one fraudulent anonymous tip to the IRS. I'm just kidding, but Gabriella does use the need to puke to her advantage in this situation by being like, pull over, I'm gonna be sick. And then she runs out of the car.
Okay, so I don't know why her pretending I have to puke plan had to extend past the point of her leaving the car. She fully stood there for a minute in a field as though it were important to conjure some vomit to make it believable. You made that part up, girl, just run. But the guy grabs her and she manages to break free just barely and he's like, I'm gonna get you. But that brings us to our next episode, episode three. Episode three is called Into the Woods, which I love because into the woods, I hate to go. Into the woods, I have to though, the musical. Okay. Hey, trying to be there soon. I hope. I'm trying to get there ASAP. <sighs> be there soon. Got attacked. Did not die. The letter C, the letter U, L, the number eight R. Why are you texting her as though your subway line got rerouted to a shuttle bus when actually you're fighting for your life out here in the wasteland? Meanwhile, Sarah is reading these texts while eating grapes by the pool, being like, Mom, Gabriella says she's gonna be here soon. Can you make sure Franco gets the guest room ready for her? Like, where is Sarah? Why are they safe? <laughs> Perfect, that should be enough water to keep you hydrated for the next 30 minutes or so until the next sicko attacks you. Again, not showing us any of the survival skills. Damn, Gabriella, was your mother a doctor? Cause I can't read those scribbles. This is one instance where I feel like I could have actually used a voiceover and I don't usually feel that way. But in this case, I don't feel like that sort of thing is gonna affect the overall quality of the final piece to a noticeable degree. Gabriella has a flashback to the before times. Yeah, I just think that you guys would actually enjoy it if you gave it a chance. Mom, I have no desire to hang out with a bunch of church kids on Friday night. I don't know, Chief. It could be fun. Come on, not you too. Okay, but why is that exercise bike looming in the corner of this scene like it's one of Satan's demons? They didn't have two crew members who could have helped slide that into the kitchen and out of this shot. To me, there's never an excuse for doing the free things that will help improve your shot, which almost always means removing practical items and furniture. Instead, I think they just tried to make the bike look smaller by giving the mom a mug to hold that's the size of her whole torso. I hear they guess pretty rockin' music. But he got raptured? Okay, when they told me about Judgment Day, I didn't realize the judging would be so rigged. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't Sarah go? Her dad's been coming to Wednesday night Bible study. Oh, is that what you call it on Wednesday nights when all the neighborhood dads get into one basement and d off together? Yes, honey, we all know about it. We just don't care. Cause I mean, I'm not touching that thing. In Jesus's name, I pray. You can tell that the actress who played Elise really relished the opportunity to say wait an undetermined number of times. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe trim a few of those off, sweetheart. They're not paying you by the word. Wait, 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 so do we. Great, then you can stop forcing your religion on me. Isn't it enough that I curl my hair the same exact way you do? Gabriella's like, TikTok has helped me discover that I'm an asexual curious atheist. And if you can't accept that about me, then you can just go to heaven and I'll stay down here trying to avoid murder. After waking up from this flashback, Gabriella comes across a woman in the forest who is like crying about her husband and her kids being gone and I'm like, they might have just walked away because your voice is so annoying. And Gabriella tells her, she's like, this is the rapture. It, it's the aliens. I know it. I watched all the videos online. Well, did you remember to thumbs up and click the subscribe button, you crazed forest dweller? And before God stole away all of your loved ones, did he also gently style everyone else's hair? There is no attempt throughout the show to make the hair and makeup look dirty, gritty, or survival-esque, which honestly could have been one of the most interesting and fun parts of this movie. Especially if this is meant for teens, like you wanna see the like, ooh, rugged uh, grittiness of it all. But they just always made them look so clean, like it's not bloody or gruesome, to show someone like with leaves in their hair, it would add to the realism of this. And again, it could have shown Gabriella having some redeemable qualities like, oh, she's resourceful. She knows how to survive by collecting water because her dad taught her. Or like some church story helped her remember how she can uh, make the most of a bad situation. She's not learning anything throughout all of this. And if this show is really for teens, which I suspect it is, it could be teaching them like resiliency or skills that they might need, like how to survive or 
stay safe, stranger danger. Not literally get into a car with the guy at the convenience store. But icy haired lady, she's about to attack. What's that? My bag? Hey! I am so hungry. Well, you could have just asked. Why can't anyone be nice? What is wrong with everyone? Well, it seems like a lot of people were vaporized and the rest are losing their minds because all of the laws of physics and reality that they know have crumbled. It's more weird that you would even ask what's wrong with people in this situation than it is that she wants to kill you for your hot Cheetos. Nice, nice. Okay, no offense, Gabriella, but that elementary school art teacher just kicked your ass. Also, why did she leave behind the still working cell phone? That was the most valuable thing in the bag, but okay. This next episode is number five and it's truly worthless. They just added this one to make it an even six, I think. The episode itself is shorter than the others, which are all four to five minutes long. This one is two and a half. And all that happens is Gabriella like falls to her knees and like, uh, oh, I get, it's called the reckoning. So I guess she's reckoning with her God and being like, please forgive me. Maybe all of these episodes like follow some sort of path of how people are gonna get saved after the rapture. I don't know, let me know. Gee, gee. Just, give it, a just give it a chance. We love you, Gabriella. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is Jesus the only way. Sorry you couldn't come to heaven with us, you miserable flop. Gabriella falls to her knees and begins to pray. <laughs> please help me. <laughs> Okay, that was a lot. At least right when I think this poor 15 year old girl couldn't be attacked one more time and possibly survive, she seems to wake up from the dream that this entire adventure turned out to be. A twist ending that was actually spoiled for me before I even watched the first episode of this show. Since if you scroll down just a little bit, you see episode six is called The Dream and the description says, Gabriella wakes up to find her family is back. Okay, great, because the suspense of not knowing would have been too much for my heart to take after watching this young girl get strangled on the ground again and again. So let's dive into our final episode, The Dream, which is thankfully just as wild as the rest of them. She said, oh, I shit myself. I love the feeling when you had a terrible dream and then you realize that it's not real. By the way, I'm wearing gloss bomb cream in the shade cupcake in. This whole pink look, how do we think, how do we feel? Tell me. Gabrielle is awake, oh my God. Mom! Well, good morning to you too. I had the worst dream. You were gone and so was dad, at least two. And then there was this creeper at the store that tried to kidnap me, even though at first I thought he was trying to help. And then there was this lady in the woods that tried to kill me <laughs> and- Honey, 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 never make that weird nasally sound again, or me and your father actually will abandon you in the woods. I'm gonna serve your waffles still frozen today to help you calm down. Uh, the lighting in this kitchen is the true end of the world for me. Those harsh shadows under the mom's eyes and cheekbones you look like you are my well-dressed Beverly Hills doctor who's gonna do my cupping. This is medical office lighting, sis. Maybe God was trying to get your attention. The Lord works in mysterious ways and maybe he knew it would take something drastic to get your attention. Or maybe just no more episodes of Law & Order SVU before bed. Why would he want to scare me so much? If he's so great and he loves me as much as you say he does. All God wants is for you to believe in him. Maybe he wanted to show you what life is like if you keep denying him. Morning, ladies. Good morning, honey. Okay, that dad definitely just raptured back into the kitchen because he came out of nowhere. Jesus loves you. Never forget that. Secrets don't make friends. Hey. Dad, you stole my line. <laughs> I'm sorry, good morning. Elise, we don't even know who you are in this show. Why are you trying to act like you have a catchphrase all of a sudden? Did they cut out a part where she said that line before? Like what, 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 what? It's bewildering, bewildering. If I were Gabriella, I'd be like, you know what? It's only been two minutes and I kind of miss that dream universe where people were killing me. Yes, 
We got it, everybody. That was flawless. It might look like a simple shot, but this actually took over 300 takes because the actress is allergic to apples and kept having to be hospitalized. But the director said it was forbidden fruit symbolism and threatened to walk off the set if we didn't get it. But don't worry, the actress who plays Elise is completely and 100% stable at this time, although they're taking it day by day. The whole family is gathered around Gabriella, who seems to be channeling mental energies throughout this whole scene. I don't know why she never stops doing this. Maybe she's trying to cover a pimple. But the whole family prays with her. Just repeat after me. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And help me start anew. And start, help me start anew. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and start anew on that whole line, Gabriella? Our God will not have you stumbling through your forgiveness prayer. Now say it right or fear the reaping. Oh, the pastor comes to the door. Remember, him and Jackie were secretly Dan, what brings you here? <laughs> oh, I just came by to smash your beeping doorbell with a hammer since I could hear it all the way in the f church. From the minute the pastor sits down, Gabriella remembers what happened in her dream and is suspicious of him. Gabriella, what has gotten into you? It's okay, folks, really. Gabriella, apologize right now. Pastor Dan is having an affair. Oh, okay. So Gabriella is spilling the tea she learned in her post-rapture vision. Listen, we understand that you're new to accepting God into your heart and all of that, but there's this one thing about not casting the first stone. Like, baby, you were just as unraptured as he was. It's like when you're 18 and you see your history professor naked at the bathhouse and they look at you all crazy. Like, you're here too. But she clocked Pastor Dan with his wandering dickiness. <laughs> Dan, are you okay? Dan. She, she's right. I have been unfaithful. Whatever you've done, whatever you're going through, the Lord can forgive you. Just let us help you. Gabriella's sitting there like, I'm not helping him. He f***ed someone named Jackie. Oh, so I guess you're allowed to judge someone the only way God is, huh? Make it make sense. I think this is just Gabriella, the uh, actress, kind of not being super clear on her performance or what her character might have learned over this because I feel like it would have made more sense for her to be compassionate in this moment. Would have been a different way to play it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay, my child. Just take short, shallow breaths and accept this oncoming heart attack as God's punishment. Ja J J J Jackie, no, Jackie's some random lady. Gabriella is like, uh-oh, what's going on? How did I know that? <laughs> that you would be with him, that he knows that he loves you. Wait, wait, something's wrong. I can't wait until season two. I heard a rumor that they start shooting it tomorrow. So we should get the full season premiere just like a couple hours after that. I hate that you can see your rolled down socks in that last shot. I hate the whole thing. I hated the whole thing. And yet I loved it because the rapture fascinates me and they made this little girl survive hell on earth. And now there's a cliffhanger at the end to get us ready for season two. Like, oh no, she's still in the wasteland, sis. I thought it would have been cool if for season two, she's like come back from the rapture, but she has this this like knowing sense of when people are straying from God's light and helps them back. But maybe they can still bring in this wasteland like she's able to touch them and show them a vision of what their life would be like if they miss out on the rapture. That's a show I would continue to watch, baby. What did you think of this one? Was it appropriately spooky for a Pure Flix Halloween? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more Pure Flix horror content like this. Also, if you're new to my channel or if you've been subscribed for a while now, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I work so hard to give you two videos every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I cast you out of God's kingdom of heaven and into the wasteland. Name that musical. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for narrowly escaping death with me and a young girl. I will see you next time.